How's it going guys? Welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, my name is Michael Pittman Jr. and I played D1 football at USC and now I am a rookie receiver for the Indianapolis Colts. And these are my tips to being a D1 football player. Roll the tape. That's a touchdown, USC. Taking a shot, has Pittman behind the defense, touchdown. Pocket for slow this time, looking deep towards the end zone, slipping and falling. Oh. In the pocket, throws middle, caught by Pittman. To the 20, to the 15, he gets to the corner. Touchdown, USC! Here's a ball to the end zone for Pittman. Oh, he caught! Down the far side, it's caught. And it's in the end zone. It's a touchdown, USC. It is three-man rush. Downfield. It's Pittman. He goes up the line to get it. He's going to take this one inside the 10, inside the 5, and in. A 78-yard strike and a touchdown for USC. Michael Pittman Jr., no shock, just put up 232 yards on one of the best defenses in the country. Not too shabby. So let's get right into it. So my first tip is there's no secret, guys. There's no one drill. There's no magic drink that just makes you a great player. Like you have to work. You have to work and you have to work and you have to sacrifice things. Like you might have to sacrifice that party that you've been wanting to go to like you might have to sacrifice that friend that only wants to do stuff that you shouldn't be doing and really i feel like that is the most important detail to becoming great is learning what you need to sacrifice to become great and be a d1 football player d1 is more of a lifestyle it's something in you it's something that you constantly live out d1 players they work out like four to five times a week they run routes like in my case because like receiver they lift weights and they're basically always talking about football doing something with football it's more of a lifestyle than like hey like i just want to go be this for like a couple days or like I want to try this out you have to live it all right so now is my next tip you want to find what you are good at so you want to find your strengths and you want to showcase those like let's say in my case like I think that one of my strengths is physical and mental toughness so I always try to put that on display with my blocking with my hitting ability with my special teams play because I feel like that's one of my best attributes is being tough. So you want to find what yours is and you basically want to show the coaches that you're the best at this. Nobody's going to be the best at everything, but you can be the best at one single thing. And that makes you valuable to your team that you're the best at that certain thing. Whatever that is for you, find it and polish it. And then also I'm going to talk a little about the college recruitment. College recruiting is a lot of things that I'm not going to get into it. For the most part, the players that deserve offers usually get offered. And the way that that works is basically colleges will come out and scout games or colleges will come out and watch camps. So the best way to get noticed, I personally think, is just playing football. Is just playing on Friday nights, like in your case, if you are a high school player, is just showing up on Friday nights and balling out because college coaches will find you anywhere. I actually got recruited late. I wasn't really a big recruit until after my junior year. I started getting offers mid-junior year, so I didn't have any going into my freshman and sophomore year. Honestly, like I didn't even know what offers were. I saw other guys got offers, but I was like, all right, that's cool. Like, I don't know what it means, but like, good for you, bro. And um, I didn't really understand what a offer was until I got my first one, which was from Cal. And then I really started realizing the power of college football and everything that comes with it. That comes with like social media presence, that comes with having to be a team captain, you gotta be responsible, you can't really mess up because 
you're in that spotlight. I ended up with like 11 offers, so I wasn't a high offer guy. I was five star though, 24-7 uh, gave me my fifth star. I mean, whatever that means. I mean, high school rankings don't mean a damn thing. But um, I mean, at least I was one, so that's kind of cool. So I was technically a late blossomer according to all the analysts and whatever. But back to everything that comes with being a D1 athlete, and that's something that I really want to touch on, guys. This is one of the most important things. I've seen so many guys mess up their opportunity, like just on just the dumbest stuff, guys. Just to keep yourself in check, I'd say the most important things is you wanna have good grades, cause I've seen guys get kicked out of school, I've seen guys not get into schools because they don't have good grades and like they're messing around like in like the classroom and not doing what they should be doing. The biggest destroyer of college football athletes is the treatment of women. Um, and this is a touchy subject because everybody has a mom, like people have sisters, aunts, grandmas, girlfriends, wives, friends that are girls and you just wanna make sure that you're always treating women right so you don't ever get in a situation where there's accusations thrown at you whether they're true or whether they're untrue because that just puts you in a bad light either way. Guys, this is also one of the biggest tips right here. Never ever skip reps, guys. I see dudes skip reps in the weight room and out at practice. If I see a guy skip reps immediately, like I just take a mental picture like of that guy and now I can't trust him. I'm not the only one seeing that. Other guys see that, coaches see it. If you skip reps when we're in the weight room and it's not a high pressure situation, what will you do when the game is on the line and we're all counting on you but you're the guy skipping reps and not doing his fair share like of the team work don't skip reps because that can lead to you missing out on a big opportunity and i want everybody to make the most of their opportunities another huge tip my guys my guys social media can be an absolute athlete killer guys i see so many guys posting foolery on their social media platforms guys do yourself a favor just go back through all of your tweets and search up bad words you type in your name your like at name and then type in comma the, the like f word or something else search them up delete all of them delete all of them right now just go ahead and stop right now and do that right now guys because anybody can pull up tweets from when you were like 10 and like you're saying something dumb and you don't really mean that but you're a young kid so just go ahead go back delete them all right now also like pictures retweets college coaches don't want to see you retweeting like naked women or like drugs um stuff like that like half naked people on twitter like college coaches don't like seeing that so you want to make sure that you keep your feed clean and also that's not you being a good role model for other people college coaches want leaders if you don't show that you can be that then they're probably not going to mess with you and that's coming from somebody who was a team captain. Another one is trying to avoid those bad situations. So just understand that there's phones everywhere, guys, and anything can be caught at any time. And then it could be uploaded and it could be out of context too. Like let's say that I have a red cup that has like water in it, but let's say that I'm at some party and somebody's taking a picture and I'm in the background sipping on that cup with like a bunch of guys, like people are gonna think that it's some type of alcoholic beverage even if it's not and when you're in high school you shouldn't be drinking and athletes honestly shouldn't even be drinking anyway my next thing is guys football drills I have seen some of the nuttiest stuff on social media guys if it has nothing to do with football don't do it I see guys doing spin moves off of the line they're shuffling back and forth they're here like they're like I don't know, like I've just seen some weird stuff. You just wanna always make sure that you know what you're doing and why. So like there's a way to ask a coach cause like you don't wanna be rude and like, and basically like put them on blast like in front of everybody else, but just pull them aside and be like, hey coach, like what does this drill do? What is this drill working on? And then if he tells you something, 
that sounds kind of funky, then like you know that that's probably not the right trainer for you. So I'm not telling you to not listen to your high school coaches because you have to listen to them because they control all of your play time. So you wanna make sure you listen to them. But I'm talking about all of these outside trainers. I think that receiver is one of the most under coached positions in all of youth sports because everybody thinks that they're a trainer, everybody thinks that they're a guru, everybody thinks that they're a foot doctor, and they're not. For those who wanna know who I work with, so I work with TJ Hoos Manzada, who he played for a really long time. I don't know how many years, but he played the majority of his career with the Bengals and he he was a very productive cat and uh, honestly he still has great feet now like he's out here running routes with us and I'm like dang bro like you could be playing right now like the dude has great feet still so that just shows that he did something right all right so my last and I think most important tip right here guys is you have to learn to love the struggle guys high school and d1 football is such a struggle because it's hard to not look at other people's success because you want to kind of compare but just know that everybody's running their own race and everybody gets their shine at different times like there's dudes that got offers before me like there's dudes that got offers when they were in eighth grade but i'm the guy that made it pro so everybody's race is different and you just got to run yours there's more lows than highs but you have to cherish those highs. Playing football, man, there's way more lows. There's way more struggles. There's way more hard times. There's way more bad stuff that happens. So you gotta cherish those good times, like those championships, those big wins, those game winning touchdowns, those big catches, guys, you have to cherish all of it and you have to celebrate those moments and you have to celebrate with your team. I'd say the best part about football is just being around a group of guys working towards the same goal as you. I mean, football is one of the greatest sports. It's one of the greatest team sports. It requires the ultimate team player because uh, basically all of us are sacrificing our bodies for one another, especially at that level where you're not getting paid. Like guys, like I just started getting paid and I started playing tackle football when I was five turning and six so I'm I've been playing for a really long time so basically to break it down more in depth about the struggles is everybody struggles with like confidence like even the best players even like Julio D hop like everybody has confidence struggles because football is basically like a game time sport like anybody can show up for like that one moment players go through highs and lows to where they're feeling great. And then like, let's say that something happens and like they're feeling terrible. And football is one of the only sports where people are encouraged to criticize you and where it's okay to openly talk about somebody in a negative way based on how they perform their like last play. I've seen players get death threats, people talking about them, talking about their girlfriend, talking about their parents, just cause they're an athlete. I mean, you're gonna have to deal with pressure from yourself, pressure from outside pressure, talking about fans, family, coaches, and sometimes it does get to be a lot and it's something that players don't really talk about because players are supposed to be seen as big, strong football players, but for a young kid, I can see how that can really affect you. And then also something that comes with confidence is injuries, guys. If you play football, you have a 100% chance of getting hurt, I promise you, everybody. Everybody will get hurt if you play. Bouncing back from injuries and having that confidence because sometimes you get hurt and you lose that confidence. When you go from high school to college is you go from being the man to being nothing. We had one of the deepest receiving classes, guys. We had the number one receiving class and I was fortunate to be the first one to come out of that. I had to compete with those guys every day. Like I had to compete with Juju, I had to compete with Tyler, with Valus, with uh, everybody else. Everybody's path is different. So for me, like I came in, I got hurt and it just happens like that. Um, unfortunately, I got hurt and uh, I didn't secure a spot my freshman year. I came back, I got hurt. I didn't secure a starting job until halfway through. And then when I secured that job, I just never looked back. So just know that the tough times don't last, but you just gotta kind of roll through them. Everything ends up getting better, guys. Like you just, like honestly, it's all about working hard 
through tough times. I think that that will get you where you want to go. All right, guys. So those are my tips to being a D1 football player, guys. I hope that this helped you out. And if it did, go ahead and like the video, please. Let me know if you want to see more of this right here because this is something that I'm open to doing. I hope you guys enjoyed. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And we will see you guys next time.